Uh, welcome again. Uh, today is a good day that God has given us. This is the day that the Lord has given us because we are blessed. God has blessed us for this day. And I want to welcome you again to be with us, to be together in this uh, episode. We are moving on, you know, we are just proceeding with the, the theme uh, which says uh, uh, priorities of faith. And in today's lesson, we shall be looking at the value of kindness, value of kindness, love, what love means and what we need to do to enhance our love for others, the value of kindness. Before we continue, let us have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for bringing us again to this forum now to be able to hear from you, to be able to listen to your word, to be able to share your love because you are a loving God, because of the gracious Father. We want to thank you even for this uh, viewer who is following, who is listening to this uh, uh, teaching so that we can be able to be blessed together to share this love as we continue in Jesus' name. Amen. The value of kindness, the value of love. You know, when you read the Bible, and I want us to read the Bible first, and I will start by reading the book of John chapter 13, verse 35. John 35, and the Bible says in John 35, uh, uh, chapter 13, verse 35, the Bible says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love to one another. If you love one another, this is how men, this is how you can be distinguished to be known that you know God, if you love one another. This is the admonition that we are getting from God, that if we love one another, that is the only way we can be identified as the followers of Jesus Christ, as the people of Jesus Christ. So today we shall be looking at um, uh, a few examples. And uh, Jonah, the prophet Jonah, when he was sent to go and preach to the people of Nineveh, and he didn't go, he went the other way. But God did what he can do because he's a God who is mighty. And later he went back and went to never. And he preached earnestly. He, we preached with grit that we looked at yesterday. With passion, with persistence. And he preached and the whole nation changed. Everybody from the king to the animals to every children, they dressed in sackcloth and worshipped God and accepted Jesus Christ. And the city was saved. But then he felt that his prophecy had not been fulfilled and he felt bad, but God proved to him and he came to understand and agree that God is gracious. That's in Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, he came and he came to terms and he agreed and he accepted that God is a gracious, he is a forgiving, he is a long-suffering God, he is a loving God, and Jonah accepted that. That is prophet Jonah in Jonah chapter 4 verse 2. But today's story, I want us to look at John chapter 4. We shall be reading from verse 5 onwards. It's a long story, but I will not go into the whole story. We shall not look at the whole story because it's a long one, but I'll we'll just give a short uh, version of it. In John chapter 4 verse 5, uh, we find that uh, then cometh to the sea, to the city of Samaria. Jesus came to the city of Samaria you know, in a piece of land or the ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. It was just the land. But the Samaritans were close there. And we find that then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near to the parcel of the ground. And now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. It was around noon. He sat there just like that. But he sent his disciples to go to the city. He told them, go to the city and buy food or meat, the way the Bible uh, puts it. You know, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith to her, give me a drink. This is was something that could not happen between the Jews and the Samaritans. It was like sheep and goat. I mean sheep and, uh, and dog. They cannot be together, you know, hyena and the sheep, they cannot be together. They had a serious enmity between each of them, between those two tribes. And I think that's what we have in our tribe, in our, in our, in our nations, where we belong. We have enmity between tribes, we have enmity between uh, clans, you know. 
Even in family, there's enmity. People, some people don't see eye to eye. So the Samaritans and uh, the Jews had an issue. They could not share, they could not sit together. And the Bible continues that uh, for his disciples who were gone to buy uh, food from the, uh, the, the city, then says the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that? How? How can this happen that I give you a drink? And I am a Samaritan woman, for the Jews have no dealings. They have no deals. There are people that we think we have no deals with. But today's topic is about kindness, the value of kindness. How valuable is it to show kindness? And you find that Jesus Christ answers and said to her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that thou sayest, Give me a drink, thou would have asked him and he would have given the living water. Jesus is trying to show kindness to this woman whom the Jews don't associate with. He's trying to show and, and, and approve and he's trying to, to act kindness. He's trying to uh, put kindness into action. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with and you know the story, the well is deep, blah, blah. But then in verse 12, uh, it says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? You know, the, the lady is challenging Jesus Christ based on the facts, the prevailing facts. And in life, we have prevailing facts that you can prove. You can say, no, no, no. Our tribe, our clan, our church, and you, we have nothing to, in common. We don't, go, we don't do things together. We have nothing in common between us. So the woman was trying to challenge and show the facts. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Welling water. Water that has life. Jesus Christ was very kind to this woman and is even promising water, which is living water. And the uh, the Bible continues to say, the, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water. When you read the verses, what Jesus says, he says that I shall give him, he shall not thirst, him shall be in him a well. He's talking about uh, um, uh, masculine. He's using men, him, masculine. But the woman says, no, give me. Give me. The woman said, give me. Sir, give me this water and I shall not thirst. Neither come hither again. I don't know. After all this happened, uh, this, uh, the woman got uh, um, this water, of course, uh, eternal life, you know, uh, this saving water. And you find that if she went, you know, there was a discussion, where is your husband? Go and call your husband, blah, blah. She said, no, I don't have your five, blah, blah. You know, later she discovered it was a Messiah. He said, you are a Messiah, you are God. You are the Lord. Jesus said to her, unto her, believe in me. The hour cometh. You know, this lady was trying to say no. Um, he was answering and say, uh, for thou hast five husbands. Then the woman said unto sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You are a messiah. You are a God. You know. Then the woman said again, our fathers worshipped on the mountain. And he say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. There's a place where we need to worship properly. We have many places of worship. We have many forms of worship. But there is the true one. There is the real one that we need to follow. And that's why we are here. We are trying to encourage each other. And Jesus was very kind. He showed kindness to this woman who was not to be part of this kingdom. And this is this where now we find that Jesus was opening up, was opening up the plan of salvation even to the heathen. And Jesus said uh, to, to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in, uh, in this mountain nor ye at Jerusalem uh, worship the Father. And he said that, you know, he's saying that it's not about Jerusalem. It's not about the place of worship. It's not about the temple. It's not about that building that you go to worship in. It's not about the place that you worship in. But he says that, but the hour cometh now and it is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such worship. God wants us to worship Him in truth and spirit, not just denomination, 
not about the big churches that we construct. No, he wants us to worship in truth and in spirit. And the story continued, and later the woman was changed, and she went and called the whole city to come. That is evangelism. When you hear about the good news, you don't stop there, you don't stay where. Come out. You go out and tell others to come too. And this is what the woman said, and he did, she did, and she went out and called. So, verse 40 says that, uh, verse 39 says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified. Our testimony can be important to pull other people to Jesus Christ. Your testimony can be very important to bring a brother, to uplift somebody who is out, who is perishing, to bring that person to Jesus Christ. And that is what we are saying, that it's evangelism. We need to pull people to Jesus Christ. We need to be a magnet that pulls people to Jesus Christ. And when you read the story, you find that this woman was pulled to Christ and she pulled others. The whole city came to Jesus Christ and you find that that is love. When you read John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in, in love, um, in, in, uh, I repeat, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. You know, God is love. And if you live in God, if you are in God, if you are in love, you dwell in God. Because God is love. And if you dwell in love, you are dwelling in, in God himself. So it's very important for us to experience and to share this kindness that we are talking about. In the same book, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, it continues. And verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 8, uh, now has something I just want us to read. Um, it says, he that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. If you don't love, then you don't know God, because God is love. And if you know God, you must love. And if you love, then you know God. My last verse before we continue, is, before we finish, is that, uh, before I just conclude, is that uh, God is love. And I want us to read uh, John chapter 3, verses 15, uh, 14 to 16, which says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. My friend, this is the Jesus Christ that I'm prescribing to you. This is the God, this is the son that I'm bringing to you this moment, that if you believe in him, you will not perish. Because you will have love, because God is love, and you should you will, you will practice love, you will practice kindness, you know, and you'll be able to share this kindness that we are looking at. And that is the value of kindness that we are talking about. Kindness is valuable. It brings life. It brings eternal life. The way God sent his son to bring eternal life, we can be able to get eternal life. We can help others to come to Jesus Christ and get that eternal life. That is why kindness is valuable. Let us go and practice that kindness. And that's my prayer that we continue showing and practicing kindness in our lives. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, I want to pray this moment, Father. I just want to bring uh, this brother, this sister, this, uh, is, this child who is listening and following and, uh, and, uh, and viewing uh, that we, all of us, practice and discover the value of love, the value of kindness and, and practice it so that we can be able to pull others to Jesus Christ. Let us practice love and spread kindness to be able to attract many to Jesus Christ so that we can all benefit from the fruit of love, which is eternal life. May your will be done uh, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you again. Thank you for joining today. And I want to welcome you again to be with us next episode as we approach to finish. <laughs>